I'm also playing I on believe... a different controller than I typically play on. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna blame that. It's the controller's fault. I mean, I believe in you. That is fair. You are. It's, it's not there's, me. There's one of the many technical troubles we had earlier oh, no. today. Um, source, if you do. Uh, awkward. Yo, what? Yeah. There are uh, three pots that have hearts in them at the bottom of the next floor. If you don't already know that. Oh yeah, I never really go down there. This, this room is just such a bullet hell all the time. Uh, oh, ow. Oh. Well, are there any um, questions from the uh, chat that we could answer? Uh, not immediately, but chat, if you have any questions about how the randomizer works no. or uh. why people are doing what they're doing, feel free to ask away and I'd be happy to help explain. Um, and like I was saying before, A Link to the Past randomizer is one of the first randomizers that was invented. There are other ones that are extremely popular. Ocarina of Time randomizer is very in vogue right now. Um, Super Metroid randomizer, I think, was the first. And there's actually a combo Super, Super Metroid plus A Link to the Past randomizer, where you go through certain uh, doors inside different buildings and all of a sudden you're playing a completely different game. Yeah, you can find like your Switch Master Sword off of uh, uh, somewhere deep inside Planet Zenus. It's a, uh, it's pretty crazy to see. My long play is to like get very good at Link to the Past randomizer so that I can then learn <laughs> um, the Metroid randomizer and then end up that, being that able to play that. I am, I am not there yet. Yeah. Yeah. Source Brulee right, thinks so that you, you two sound now. exactly alike. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> All right, well, I will so take that as a compliment, here. Brakar. I'm glad you. I'm glad you take that as a compliment. <laughs> Stupid fire! Get out of here! Get out of here! Go get you too. Okay. Oh no! All right. Let's see. I gotta get really close. Yeah, okay, SMZ3 exactly. Rando is awesome. I don't actually play the Super Metroid part of it, and I don't think any of us do either. Oh, I did it! Let's go! First try, First try hey, bomb diver go. down. <laughs> So that lets you grab so this key, be here. just like walking on top of the water and picking up a... You're picking up a skull pod that is drowned underneath the water while you are standing on top of the water because that's how physics works now. Yeah, and it's the, the reason a... that that's useful... Oh, oh go ahead. You go ahead. Um, so yeah, that, that trick is great specifically for this dungeon because normally there's like a really circuitous route you need to take. You need to like... Go get the key, then flip the switch to hit the thing, and then, oh, you have to walk back by the big key chest. Um, so you have to visit all the rooms, like, multiple times, but that trick lets you visit each room once. And it ends up saving a ton of time. Mm -hmm. um, Keanu asks, what is a good time in a randomizer ma race? Um, being so able to... My, first my of all, first of all... Is... Yeah, first of all, let me say, yeah. being able to finish this at all is a good time because as we were saying before a link to the past is a very hard game and depending on the seed that you get that can make the game even harder so being able to finish is already like a good initial goal that being said for us um getting into the competitive side of things around oh, wow. two hours is typically a very competitive time with it being multi-world i would expect this to go a bit longer than two hours probably closer to two hours 30 but that's with two people doing the game at the same time. Um, yeah, because you can, you can sort of get stuck waiting for the other person's item. Yeah. No, I, I definitely, uh, definitely feel uh, the same way in terms of in terms of time. I think my the first time the first time I completed it, I, it was like a four and change out, four and a half hours or something like that. It took yeah. me a very very long time. That's faster than yeah. the first time that I beat it. <laughs> Yeah, that, and that is very close to, like, my first time as well. Like, my initial goal was just to get us below four hours. All right, bomber diver down, bomb mark two, go. Oh, this looks good. Uh, 
No, oh, I'm stuck in it, but it didn't stuck. work. Okay. All right, that's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. We'll do it again. You know you have to tap. If you're stuck, like that, you can tap left. If you're in the state that I think you're in, like you, you tap left a single time and then you can jump down, I think. I'm getting clipped in, but not. How many bombs do I have? Oh, I have. I'm fine. I got time. Oh, nope. Yeah, Blade GVR um, says it's funny to see Brackar having full health and Source running around with only one. Oftentimes, from my experience, if I have a lot of the safety items available, then I just end up getting careless and I can have like 15 hearts and red mail and I'll still be at like two hearts. I could also be at like six hearts and green mail and I'd still also have two hearts just because I'm much more careful um, yeah, when you start playing safer. having low safeties. All right. One more time, uh, otherwise I... Since you have seen Diver Down, if I just can't do this in a marathon setting, that's fine. I will... I will go do the other one. This looks, looks good. good. Uh, no, I clipped out. I don't know what's happening. All right, we'll do it the old way. Yeah, that was, that was what was happening to me, too. It looked like I was going to get it. All right, tap I left. Up somehow. I did. Oh, I did. okay, I you're good. You're good. You're good. Yay, so, nice. fun, fun, fact about, fun fact about that room, when you go up that stairs, there's a glitch that can happen where you go back down the stairs without meaning to involuntarily, and it's a bit of a head-scratcher why that happens, but there's a way that you can avoid it by just tapping left. <laughs> yeah. As you're climbing yeah, so the staircase back. so going back to back. the time things, yeah, my first run was, like, 4.10 when I played. And so it's like setting incremental goals for yourself is, is really good. Um, like getting sub four hours and then sub three hours. Um, I only got like sub two hours about like a month and a half ago. For reference, I've only been playing this since about August of this year. Um, so I'm still like fairly new to the scene. Volt's actually my, my personal sensei teaching me how to go through this. Um, I do my best. Yeah, so my PB right now, my PB right now is 138, which I'm actually really happy with. I didn't think I'd get sub 140 this year. Yeah, and mine for comparison is uh, uh, actually one that I set, I think, two or three days ago, um, is a 146. Which I'm also quite quite pleased with because I didn't I didn't yeah I was I was yeah. I was struggling. There was a there was a period of of several weeks where every single time that I got was at was 230, 235, 238, 232, like over and over and over. Um, and I was just like I hit a plateau, and it, it took quite a while to push through it. And it's also yeah. it's also worth noting that like there is a lot of variability in this, right? Because sometimes sometimes the way that the items decide to position themselves is extremely non-conducive to a speedrun. Sometimes you end up having to do all of the dungeons because um, an item that you need is on the Master Sword pedestal, which requires the three pendants in order to get, and ordinarily you wouldn't need to do the three pendants at all. So, um... While personal bests, just just keep in mind that there's a lot of variation that can come in yeah, a link to the past absolutely. randomizer. So if you're not always setting personal bests for yourself, that doesn't necessarily mean that you're not improving. Okay, well, I one found the key. I recently... Which is big for me. Sorry, keep going. Oh, oh I forgot. One of, the, one, of the, one of the things that I recently started doing was um, was using the sort of um, the like timer apps that, that speedrunners use, but instead of setting the time, the like, the, the sort of comparison time to the best, um, I set it to the average. And so the, like what progress looks like is actually bringing those averages down, like the average time to get the first crystal, the average time to get the second crystal, etc. cetera, um, bringing those averages down over time. Yeah, I like that approach. Um, that accounts for the variability. Um, fellow Regis asks, how do you start learning randomizer? Is it by playing the base game over and over, by looking up guides, videos, etc.? cetera? Um, I'll say for my so part. So true story. I've never played this base game. I've I started with this game in randomizer. I've never played this game vanilla. Yeah, there are people. There are people that definitely get into this game just through the randomizer it. itself. That's what got me to like get invested in it. I had played a link to the past as a kid several times actually, and. I really enjoyed it, but also really found it oh, no, quite challenging. That. Even just like figuring out what to do and where to go can sometimes be very challenging if you're not used to the logic already. Um, but the way that I got into Randomizer was I happened to discover it and watch a lot of the competitive races. Some of the best runners play it, and I'm like, hey, this looks really fun. I want to give it a shot. And then I found the Discord, I found ALTTPR.com, found the community for it, and 
the community has a lot of very helpful resources to get you started. Um, and you can find a link to the Discord on the main, a link to the past randomizer webpage, which is alttpr.com. Yeah. There's a lot of really good guides. There's a lot of good instruction, like instructions on how to start performing some of the simpler glitches. Um, there's even some, some sort of tools, some software that will show you based on your game state, which checks you have access to, which ones you've already done, which ones are behind glitches that you can't do without certain items, etc. Yeah, that is, um, for me, one of the ways that was the most useful. They're using one of those trackers to see like, oh, hey, here are all the locations on the map that I like can do right now. And oh, here are the locations I can't and here are the items I need to do those. That was where I started. And that was an incredible way for me to figure out like the logic of the game and what have you. And then on top of that, uh, Volt mentioned, but the community, um, and particularly there's a lot of like very active streamers who play this game like every day and do a new seed. Um, I think the final thing I'll mention is that um, you actually have a lot of control of the randomizer itself. We're playing a uh, default rule set right now, um, which is like advanced item placement, seven crystals, uh, seven dungeons. Oops. But you can tweak that a lot. You can. There's a simpler item placement called basic, uh, where some of the more obscure locations tend not to have um, progression items. Uh, you can change the number of dungeons you need to beat. You can change the number of crystals you need to have. And all of those will like affect the algorithm to either make things like easier or harder for you. Yeah, and when you when you start out, there's a there's a um, there is an option that makes you makes it so that you always start with the basic sword. Um, because there are there are uh, seeds of this game that are possible. We didn't we didn't run into them today, but they, that are possible um, where you have to complete between one and several bosses before you ever get a sword. Mm -hmm. um because there are you can you know damage bosses in other ways um and so you may have to fully clear entire dungeons with no sword at all um and yeah. and that's it, t it tends to be tough uh until you've sort of learned the game and learned which items you can use for what mm -hmm. the other thing that the basic item setting does is one it makes sure that there is a sword available on the uncle and two it makes it so that you don't have to do dungeons until there are a certain number of heart containers and hearts that are in logic before they're necessary to complete. Yeah, so this thing I was talking about, about having to do Aghanim on five hearts, like, will, will not happen under that rule set. You will, you will get more hearts before we'll ask you to do that. Yeah. Granted, it, granted, so it might not be a lot more. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, so I discovered I am boot. Uh, I need boots as well. So I am looking for fire rod, okay. ice rod, and boots. You need boots for desert. I need boots for desert. Okay. Which may or may and not also... be necessary in mini seeds, but in this one it is. Yeah. And I believe that was also a sword for you on the um, library. Yeah. Yeah, that'll be my butter sword, which I will get. Uh, it's called a butter sword because you, you'll find that out later. Um, but yeah, that'll be a nice time save when I get it. It's um, called but, it's my, called butter sword because it's better than margarine. <laughs> I can't believe it's not. Yeah, my my library has uh, has uh, one of my armor upgrades, which I like desperately need because I'm still on green metal. Oh man! Oh <laughs> but no! I also, I, I also do not have the boots yet, so. Source hasn't been to so. Source, you haven't been to desert yet, correct? I don't technically know whether or not uh, it's my armor or Brackar's armor, but I'm, I assume it's mine. Uh, I, I I have not been to desert yet. Okay, so we don't know if Source's deserts is also necessitates the boots. Um, and yeah, and what we mean by boots locked is that there is an item in there in, in that dungeon that you can only get if you have the boots. Um, there's like a it's like a key that you that will get knocked off of a pillar. Um, and if you don't have the boost, you can't knock it off, and therefore you can't complete the dungeon. Yeah, that, that dungeon, uh, Desert Palace requires you find oh, the big no. key. Not all, uh, not all dungeons require you find the big key, which is a cute thing of the randomizer. Um, in the base game, uh, okay. um, all dungeons required the big key, but sometimes it was implicit. Like the item you needed to kill the boss was in the big key chest. Here, that's not always true. Um, but in the case of Desert Palace, um, yeah, sometimes the uh the big key will be on that lamp uh or the item or the small key that you need to get the big key will be there and you need it to get through a, a locked door that mm -hmm. requires a big key 
Yeah, Desert Palace, it, it, despite being the second in dungeon in the game, it can actually be very challenging to try to route because one, it's in the lower left corner of the map, which is super isolated, and two, there are a lot of different circumstances that can be used to access it versus um, beat it. You can get there either with the book through the front entrance or with a combination of the flute, titan's mitts, and mirror, which seems like that would be a lot, but those are items that you're generally going to get anyway, so having to do that combination in order to get into the back of Desert Palace happens more often than you might think on first glance. Um, in fact, you also that's need, exactly what I had to do. You also need a um, glove upgrade to complete it, as well as the lamp um, in order to beat the final boss. But then, as we were mentioning, in order to get the in order to get an item on the torch, you need the boots. Sometimes that item is necessary and sometimes not. So there are a lot of different circumstances that are involved. And then if you play Key Sanity, which is a variant in which the um, dungeon the dungeon items are not confined to their vanilla dungeons, they can be found anywhere else. Finding that small key to Desert Palace can also be an ordeal. Yeah, it, it ends up being where for a surprisingly large amount of the time, for an early dungeon, it's one of the last ones you do. Yeah. Okay. So I found my two things, so this has to be here. Yeah. All right, Mazir Meyer was not that fruitful for either of us, but... Oops. Misery Meyer is my personal dungeon. least favorite dungeon. It's... There are eight chests, yeah, but there. only two random items. <laughs> yeah. Oops. And you need the big key it's... in order to complete it. I think I dislike Skull Woods more because at least in Misery Mario you can frequently put off and there's the bonus of um, the overworld checks near it uh, that you can do. Skull Woods, it's always kind of like a an interesting strategic call about when you go into Skull Woods. It did. Yeah. Which we haven't seen anything from Skull Woods yet. <laughs> Source doesn't have the fire rod, it's... which is necessary to complete it. And for Brekkar, it's a yeah. pendant. Yeah, so I skipped it. Although, fate might take me there soon. Ooh. Oh, wow. All right, source found the That's cane, the red cane of Samaria. That is needed for Misery Mire as well as Turtle Rock. It's needed in Misery Mire to get through exactly one room which Brackar had just got through, in which you have to use the cane to conjure a block to put on a switch and then move downward. In Turtle Rock... The Cane of Samaria has this additional property where it can create these, like, moving platforms for you to stand on, and a lot of the dungeon has you use moving platforms to uh, solve puzzles. So Source is checking out the right, Misery I'm Mire area my now. Desert palace. Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to see if my... Or, well, actually, yeah, I'll do. It is so a pendant. Typically, yeah, yeah. Um, typically, so... In, in general, right, like, the way that I try to route things is there's a major objective that I have in mind, in this case, checking um, to see whether my Desert Palace is boost locked. Um, but there are also several sort of convenient checks nearby-ish or on the way um, that, I'll, that I'll sort of grab. Oh, thank goodness. Okay. Also, don't forget to check your upgrade. medallion for Meyer, just in case. Yes. Yeah, so you need one of the three spells to open Misery Meyer. In my case, it is Bombo, so that logo right there. Um, which I do have, so I can get into Misery Mire. Uh, Misery Mire is a pendant for me. Oh no. Okay. That oh, works out. <laughs> it's fine. I, I, I do that a lot. I, I end up clipping into that wall. Normally when you when you mirror into a wall like that, it'll actually just send you back to the Dark World, but in this one case, for some reason, you just jump a very long way to nowhere. Sort of confusing, but that's okay. So I'm about to do the thing that Volt was talking about a second ago about going in the back entrance of Desert Palace. So you go into the Dark World like this. It's fun because doing it this way is faster, even if you do have the book. Yeah, right. Wait. Then you mirror in here. And oh, did I, did I do the thing again? Hi. Let's see. There's one check down here that I'll go take a peek at. And then you can just go right into this thing. 
All right, Brackar is about to do Skull Woods. Source is checking desert right now. Brackar is doing Skull Woods the 100% safe way, it looks like. 100% <laughs> safe way, yeah. Because I want to... Um, so Skull Woods has a bunch of small keys in it. Um, for the way I read it, I need at least one. And I can be aggressive and bet I'll find it in the chest. But if I don't, I have, it's a soft lock and I have to save and quit. So I tend to do this way in marathons. And my data pass is boost locked. That's All right, we'll be needing both of your boots, which means that we'll be getting someone's red mail as well. <laughs> okay. Let's see. The funny thing about playing multi-world randomizer in specific is because items can be found in either game, when you see an item physically in a location, you don't actually know whose it belongs to un until you get it. That being said, there are some items that are unique, so if... Source sees something like the flippers, and Brekkar already has the flippers, then... Obviously, since Brekkar already has his, then that would be Source's. Right. But okay, and so now we'll be looking for your boots. Each of your boots before going into go mode. Boots, fire rod, ice rod for me. <laughs> So I was talking about a tracker earlier. I normally I normally play with a tracker up on my other monitor, but because we're in VR today, I am trackerless, which means I'm having to sort of keep the state of all of the che possible checks and which ones I have access to and which ones I've already done in my head. Um, and it is something that I'm not 100% used to, so I may, I'm, I'm gonna somewhat rely on, on these fine folks to tell me if I'm forgetting about something. Right, I know so I still have to do the North Loop. Uh, yeah. Not, not to be lost, Source is doing uh, Skull Woods the riskiest way, which is jumping down this hole and then betting that you'll find a small key in one of these three chests that are coming yeah. up. You have, you have three chances. And oh, first there one. one is, so worked out. Yeah, so we're not soft locked. And like the, the math on this is that you end up getting soft locked something like six to eight percent of the time, I think it was. Um, which is unfortunate, but I, I already can't complete this dungeon um, because I don't have the fire rod, and so like I'm kind of I'm willing to just sort of come in and take a peek at it and not not you know avoid spending too much time on it. Mm -hmm. Skullwoods also has only two right. random items, and Source just found one. Yeah, and I found one in mine, uh, so another one well, in mine is at the back. But I actually found but that means I actually found both of them because I found about 300 rupees as well. Oh, you found 300 rupees as well. Okay, cool. So yeah, it was in the, the first chest was in rupees. Is that right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, okay, cool. So, so then you are done. I, in that case, I'm just going to leave. Cause there's, there's no way I can find it. I was sort of hoping that I would find the fire rod. Um, actually, I'm going to go this way and we're going to do the north loop. I get it. Yep, I think that's a good call. Oh. Yeah. Do you want to talk about some of the convenience stuff of the randomizer seed as well? Uh, what do you mean by convenience stuff? Uh, the changes to text and other things. Oh, like oh, yeah. how they cut, made cutscenes out of the game? Yeah. yeah. Um, so ordinarily when you get a crystal, there is a lot of text that you get from saving the maiden. There's, There's a fire, fire rod. rod. Um, the randomizer cuts out the majority of the repetitive and unnecessary dialogue in the game. There's also a hint setting that is currently enabled where you can use the telepathic tiles, which in the vanilla game would actually offer you hints on how to complete the dungeon, but in the randomizer it tells you, it gives you hints about specific items or specific locations, what you can find there. Not always yeah. useful hints, to be fair. Yeah, sometimes, sometimes the, the hints are like the, you know, the Palace of Darkness key is in Palace of Darkness, and you're like, yeah, great, thanks. <laughs> you know, um, but but sometimes they are quite useful. In particular, like sometimes you'll um, you'll it'll tell you what's on the pedestal, so like that that thing that you need all three pe uh, all three pendants to open, um, and that is a very lengthy check to 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 find out sometimes, um, and so knowing what's on it is like oh good i don't have to worry about it this this time or whatever or maybe yeah. i do and that's good to know that as well yep most of the time the hints are biased towards locations that are normally very difficult and out of the way to access i'm sad i couldn't show off the the hammer dash yeah i hope you find uh the boots soon <laughs>
Yeah, and I didn't get to show off water running either. All the cool, all the cool glitches either in this game either involve. Oh, I can't, I can't open this. What am I doing? All the cool glitches in this game either involve the boots or the cane of Samaria, pretty much. Sometimes bombs. But... Well, we now have the cane, and neither of you have done Ice Palace yet, and both of you can. Ice That's Palace true. happens to be the green yeah. pendant for both of you, though. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that's... Where, where am I? What am I doing? That's probably where I'm going next, honestly. Um, I don't want oh, yeah. to, but... Yeah, I think... I think, I think I'm think i actually going to do that as well. I, I was going to go check... Oh, I already checked... I already checked Garmid, because I did Aghanim. Right, this is this is the whole, like, not having a tracker thing. Oh, no. Okay, I'm good. Catching up with me. It can take you soon. Um, Tay the Time, time Traveler asks, how many times do you just find items in their vanilla positions? Because that can be kind of funny to find. Um, it, it does happen. It does happen, and it can actually be very mean for when it happens. Because, as I, I was saying I towards the beginning... The absolute happens. worst. <laughs> Yeah, as I was saying towards the beginning of the stream, a general strategy that people use when routing through randomizer is to not enter a dungeon until you have all of the items to complete it, because you can't rely on the item that you need to complete it being inside the vanilla dungeon. However, if something like the hammer is in the big chest of pod, the dungeon where it's found in, yep. um, that can often be very rude and you'll like last location it <laughs> before going anywhere yeah. else. Yeah, hammer hammer in, in vanilla location and pod is absolutely the worst one um, because it hammer on like gates a lot of stuff too, and so you not only did it take you forever to find it in its vanilla position, but you like haven't had it, you know, to to help you traverse the overworld and 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 you know have dark world access and all this other stuff. I realize I haven't looked at Lake Hylia. I should do that. It's a it's a nice view. Let's do that. You could like <laughs> you could like film a movie there. And call it the nose. There's a nice rod here. It'll make me happy. Nope. Okay. <laughs> oh dear, Volt. Oh dear. <laughs> All right. Do you want to you want to start, start describing icebreaker? Oh yeah. All right. So source is about to, and Brackar too are about to do one of my favorite tricks in the game, which is called icebreaker. So icebreaker, you use the cane of Samaria and a set of very precise um positions and inputs to clip through a wall which gets you to the right side of the dungeon first not only is this the fastest way to complete the dungeon but it also front loads the item checks because there are a lot of items on the right side as well so um it was very important what source did there about hitting the crystal switch before moving on word to this screen um, because I can never, oh, I can never actually get this like later. spam. Oh wait, I, I just had it. All right, let's try to set this up again. And with this input delay, it's like very hard to pause buffer. Yeah. Do you wanna? Do you wanna tell the audience how we're doing the setup right now? Sure. And how we're in VR and playing together. <laughs> oh, there you go. There you go. You got it. Um, hey. Icebreaker! Yeah, so Brackar and Source are actually in VR chat right now. I'm in I'm in VR chat as well, but on desktop mode. Um and we have OVR Toolkit open, which is a program that lets you see your desktop uh while inside VR. Oh, no. So No, 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 no. Oh, you got this, you got this. Sorry. Don't <laughs> feel, free to, feel free to hit the skeleton out of the way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, just, I got I got bunnied at the same time. Yeah. So Brecker and Source are oh, in o using OVR Toolkit in order to see their screen at the same time while getting to hang out in VR chat and create this couch experience for all of us. And then we are streaming our gameplay to Discord, and then Rube, who is off camera, it is our camera source. Volt is then combining all of those together. Oh, hey, there you go, Source. Ooh. Um, Volt is then combining Ooh, nice. all of those together to stream to OBS, yeah, right. and Zula and Rube are being kind enough to help us with our tracker as well. Yeah, we, have a, we have a fairly complicated tech setup going here, which is, you know, part of the reason uh, for some of the challenges. Yeah, here we go. Uh, oh, no, no, boots. Oh, no. Uh, please. Okay. Oh, no. 
So, source, this is I, the believe, worst room in the game. I believe all you need for go mode is uh. um, the boots and maybe the quake medallion. With having found that fire rod. Um, I don't need to do this bomb jump. Because I, because I had to record, right? Um, I wasn't oh, counting on the items. I, I need ice tier room, actually. No, I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm done with items. I'm done with items. Okay. So here's, yeah, so here's, here's an example of a bomb jump actually working, hopefully. If I don't jinx myself. Nicely done! So I can I just jump right across that pit. Yep. How do you get ice tier from here? You go down, right? Yeah. Yep, you go down. Yeah, down. Which you can only do if you have a small key, which isn't a problem, because you do. Yeah. Yeah, so I had to skip uh, Ice Tea Room, but I didn't end up needing um, need to go there because I've gotten all three items that are in this dungeon. The Ice Fizz in this game are boss. absolutely punishing. <laughs> <laughs> I'll still beat the boss on my side because uh, he has a green pendant, which is another item check, but I know I've completed the dungeon from. And we yeah, know so it was necessary because in. it had Fire Rod. Yeah. Yeah, that fire rod was a big find. Yeah. Completing Ice Palace is considered one of the most difficult dungeons in the game. This is a very difficult boss. As you can see, Brackar got hit by him once and it did four hearts of damage. Um, cold Star Hugs are very painful. Um, oh, no. Routing your way through Ice Palace is particularly confusing and difficult to navigate because there are several loops that are circuitous. But um, once you get used to the logic and figuring out where everything is, it's actually a lot of fun to do because it contains three items and with the use of Icebreaker and another bomb jump that we don't get to see because Icebreaker ren renders it unnecessary, um, hmm. uh, Ice Palace a is a lot of fun. <laughs> um, what it, I is, do? Yeah, it is definitely it is definitely one of the more difficult parts of any run, um, but yeah, but it, it is... Pulling it off in particular feels great. And doing this Let's cold stir fight can be very difficult, especially on uh, green mail. Yeah, and I have I have no safeties, I have no potions, so that's not not ideal, but so I am gonna Go turn in the green pendant. I'm doing it from Dark World because I'm gonna safety check that uh, that one treasure chest in Palace of Darkness, and this will be the only time I come back to this area of the map. That's a totally fair call. So I didn't really explicitly talk about the use of the pendants. Um, the green pendant you can turn into Sahasrala who is here and he will give you an additional item that in the vanilla game would be the boots But in this particular seed it is a red rupee not necessary um, <laughs> No, no the... my portal. Oh no. Oh no. Uh oh, you see this? <laughs> oh man, you were too there you Oh go. nice okay, nice nice. <laughs> All right. I, I, had to, I had to leave it and come back. S saved it You broke into Sahasrala's house too eagerly the poor, the poor old man was just enjoying his morning coffee, and you had to come <laughs> up and extort him for twenty bucks. Um, the Wait. other use, the other use of pendants is if you have all three pendants, then you can check the master sword pedestal, and the master sword pedestal normally would have the master sword, but it has one item that is usually not necessary, but in extremely rare like. 0.5% of circumstances, it is. So oftentimes when people are playing randomizer, they get hyped for, is this a ped seed? Is this a pedestal seed? Um, uh, okay. Wherein you need whatever item it is that's on the pedestal in order to progress through the game and get all the rest of the crystals. I also just remembered that I have not done Light World or Dark World Death Mountain, which means there's like 10 checks over there oh. or something. Oh, Source, go there right now. What are you doing? <laughs> Bail. Bail. Let's go with this crystal dungeon. It's on my list. It's a crystal yeah. dungeon. You have one item left to find. To be okay. fair, to be fair, I, I couldn't get there until I found the hookshot. Uh, it, okay. it, at least Light World. I, I have been able to go there for a while, actually. I shouldn't. I shouldn't. Uh, yeah, you I shouldn't, did Swamp Palace the same time I, I did. I shouldn't, I shouldn't what are you talking about? about? But, uh, yeah, it's fine. Don't worry about it. 
I'm sure there will be nothing important over there, except for both of our boots, probably. <laughs> except for both of our boots, my ice rod. Yeah. Uh, all right, that's fine. That's fine. It's a crystal dungeon, so do the crystal dungeon. You could also mirror to show what's on pedestal. Yeah, I do have, I do in fact have the book. Because uh, you need, you could, the other way that you can check what's on pedestal, other than getting it from a hint pile, is if you have the book, you can read, you can read the pedestal itself, and it will just tell you what item is there. Get away. Oh my god. You know what? <laughs> that is a good defense. Like, spawn camping. Right. Last night, I was practicing all these speed strats with boots. I was like, oh, I oh, gotta no. get these inputs down. And I'm still here. No boots. We just, all we the just afternoon, just, I've, just walking I've, yeah. by. Extremely same. Um, the Volt mentioned earlier um, that we are that we run competitively. And like, I think for all three of us, it, definitely at least for Brecker and I, it's our first time uh, running uh, like competitive races. Um, and the interesting thing about that, oh no. Uh, the interesting thing about that is that there basically is a different format every week. Um, and so there's like sort of different, as we mentioned, there's like custom rules and there are different custom rules every week as I get grab level master. That's what I get for talking. Um, and la the, the, my most recent race was a race where you start the game with swords and boots. Um, and so like practicing how to get good at running with the boots is, is like sort of a big part of being good at that particular format. I rattled this slightly wrong, but that's fine. I should check Ledger while I'm out here. Okay, I'm glad you're using the lamp there. Yeah. No. Nope. Okay, source is coming up to Mothula, who is the boss of Skullwoods. Yeah. Also one of the more unpleasant bosses in the game. Yeah. Especially, I mean, this this sort of uh, VR chat um, setup has caused, give, gives me about 150 to 200 milliseconds of input delay. And so in particular, as you'll see, this, this fight tends to be fairly precise. There's lots of stuff moving around. And so it's just a little extra difficult. So fun fact yeah, about the spikes in this room, the spikes will always deal one heart of damage regardless of what mail upgrade you have. Mothila's um, beams will deal a variable amount. In With blue mail, it's also one heart of damage. Okay, and that was a map, so I believe you still have one item left to find. No, I, fi I found both of them. It was a 300 rupees on a heart piece. Okay, then you're good. From the front side, yeah. It's Brackar that has one item left to find. Yeah. Alright, let's see what's on this pedestal. Alright, I'm predicting three bombs. Alright, couch, uh, couch change. Hmm. Alright, well, I have to round out the, 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 the trifecta by going arrows. Refreshing oh, green goo. Green, green goo. That is a bottle of green potion. Not necessary. Would be nice to have, but definitely not worth uh, picking up. If no, you can not avoid worth it. three dungeons. Not worth three dungeons. Alrighty. No. We also haven't been able to show off super speed because we haven't had the boots. We haven't had the boots. This is a shame. Alright. Um, okay, Soon so enough. next. Next is Spike Cave, and then I'm gonna die of Turtle Rock. Get the. I don't know. I yeah. Dead Rock myself. It's a disaster. Yeah, Source. Source not only can do the right side dungeons, but can actually beat Turtle Rock yeah, as can, long as you, as long I as it doesn't do, require the do Quake Medallion. Yep. Yeah. So hopefully you'll find what I need. Uh, it's much more likely that you'll find it than I will. Mm -hmm. Alrighty. Dead Rocks continue to be the final boss of this game. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm watching your screen. Come on, you can do it. Ice Rod. Ice Rod. Heart of the cards. That's not an Ice Rod. Oops. 
Oops. Mostly is it for oh, me. man. So yeah. Well, I gave myself gave myself a fetch quest. Right, let me see if I can do this bomb jump. Hey, let's go. I think that's it. Oh no! Almost, almost. Saying. Yeah, I think you were a little okay. too high on that positioning. So you haven't even checked a hookshot cave yet, right? That is correct. Yep. All right. You said that was a spiral for the moment, but or I'll come back to spiral. <laughs> this cave is called Hookshot Cave because there is only only one of the chests in it is accessible uh, without the hookshot, and all the rest of them require the hookshot. Oh, I get to do the uh, I get to do the disappearing block trick again. All right, ready, set. Where did they go? It's magic. Right. It's a nice trick because all you need to do is mash. Yeah, this is the yeah, it's the easiest trick in the game. You just literally spam the button as fast as you can. No, I'm not kidding. I, I will not doubt myself. I left that hair chest there for a reason. I'm not gonna go for it. <laughs> <laughs> the true no, heart of the cards play. Buy. Let me buy. <laughs> yeah. Um, if you end up checking it after Turtle Rock, it wouldn't be the end of the world because the portal is still there, and you can drop down to the portal from the safety room. Yeah. That's fair. I should have checked what was on. Wait. No. What are we doing? Uh-oh. Okay, you got a green potion. Oh, You're good. I brought a safety just in case. Okay. As a cost of checking, spike rod gave uh, spike cave first. Hmm. All right, and I can get into the rod because it is uh, it is ether. Okay. So I probably just do that after this, I assume. Yep, that makes sense. Right, it has see. turtle rock has five items. And you already saw it was on the ledge, correct? Yeah. Cool. Okay, so Turtle Rock uh, is another interesting yeah. dungeon to route through. It's actually somewhat linear, despite not really appearing that way on the surface. Um, there are five dungeon items, plus an additional one that you can get to via... It's an additional overworld location that you have to be able to access this well. dungeon in order to get to. And there are four small keys in addition to the big key. If you're doing this in go mode, which is when you've had all the items and you're not looking for anything more, then it's sometimes possible to skip um, up to two of the chests. But in this situation, since both Brakar and Source are looking for things still, then they're going to be clearing as much of it as they can. The things that we still need are the ice rod for Brakar, and the boots for both Brakar and Source. And once we have all those, then we have everything we need to be able to clear Ganon's Tower. I feel, I feel vindicated for not checking Death Death Mountain, by the way. There was literally nothing. The, the best thing that I got was one mushroom, which opens one other check in one other place. The rest of it was just red rupees. Red rupees and nonsense. Yeah, Death Mountain was a ghost okay, town this time around. I am going to the most dangerous room in the game, especially on three hearts. Mm -hmm. So the most dangerous room, room in the game is up. actually Chomp Room. Oh man! These chain chomps do a lot of damage, and you can't defeat them. You just have to deal with them. And their AI is kind of random. Can we, oh. Also, can we talk uh -oh. about? Oh, you lose it. Cape, cape, cape. No, I'm okay. I'm okay. Cape, it, it wouldn't let me do it. All right, I'm you fine. made it. You got, ma you got magic powder. I'm okay. If you hold right while going down the steps, then you won't take damage from this anti-fairy. Yeah. Um, I didn't hold right enough. <laughs> <laughs> I 
<laughs> That's fine. It's not. Right, it's it's not too big of a time loss. It's fine. Yeah, I, I briefly hit the. I held down right when I left the door, as opposed to just right. So. Mm. That's what happened there. No. Oh, oh no! Come on. Uh, source is full magic in the pot. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Just, I'm sad that I got the door got slammed in my face there. Yeah. So the trick to this room, you have to have all four of the torches lit at the same time when the door opens. But as you've just seen, the door can close. So, um, the way that you're supposed to do this is by, um, taking the path south and going the long way around in order to light the four torches, and then immediately position yourself right near the door that you need to go through. However, the speed strat for this is to light the four torches as fast as possible and then hookshot to your death, so that way um, you respawn where the door is and can go through that way. Well, look, can we just take a moment to talk about how this game features cameos from the Mario universe, the Mega Man universe, and... Um... Oh, there was a third one. What was it? What am I thinking of? Uh, Mega Man Universe? Wait, what's, what's the Mega Man yeah, cameo? The, the, ham the, 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 the hammer pegs. Aren't those, aren't those originally like Mega Man uh, sprites? Uh, no. I'm not familiar enough maybe, with maybe, Mega maybe Man to comment on that. <laughs> maybe Mega I'm, also maybe I'm dreaming, game, so. but... Um, mm. I thought there were... Maybe maybe they're just similarly styled, and I'm, and I'm dreaming, but... Alright, let's see if I can do jump room here. Okay, yep. Okay, perfect. Nice. Oh, okay. Everything's fine. I also feel like there was one other, like, random thing from some other game. I think, um, um, I think the Super Mario Camera is the only thing, and that comes from um, Link's Awakening. Uh, it's actually a reference to, to Link's Awakening, if I recall correctly. Yeah, that's correct. Which had... That had his own set of cameras. I don't remember that. And now it's going to bother me that I don't remember what the, what the other thing was that I was thinking of. Hmm. Um, uh-oh. One moment. Hmm. Accidentally... What's up? Oh, uh, it, it's fine. Okay, there we go. Okay, I accidentally I accidentally did I... the thing where I popped Discord out to another window. Ah, I see. I um I found the book in Mimic Cave. Oh no! Oh, that's right. I have book checks too. I forgot about those. Late game book is always my least favorite item. Do you want to explain well. how mimic remote, mimic remote Control works? Sure. So we call this Mimic Cave because the mimics that are here will do the exact opposite of whatever inputs that you're making. You can manipulate the mimics, however, by doing a neutral grab and then um, m maneuvering them around by uh, hitting the uh, arrows normally. And that makes that room much easier to complete because you can just bring them, bring all the ones on the right side right down into sword range. Sword range. Yep, that's right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, my turtle rock is nothing either. Wow. <laughs> wow. Okay. Also, I'm running on two and a half hearts in a dream. But the dream is still alive. 
And the dream is, in fact, alive. Hey, I did it. I, and then I could theoretically... Times. could theoretically maybe fake powder to... No, I'm just going to be super safe. Actually, do I have powder? That's no, fair. okay. I could theoretically fake powder to do it very bit. I wouldn't do that in Turtle Maybe Rock. You need magic a lot for here. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So this part, this part of the dungeon that Brackar is doing no. is a little bit rude. Um, it is Laser Bridge. There are four items that are on Laser Bridge, um, but the lasers hurt a lot. There is a trick that you can do in order to basically dodge the lasers, even when you don't have an invulnerability item. But that is also... Which I did the very first one, but... Right. That's, that's, al that's also very difficult. That is also very difficult to um, pull off. So what helps here is that Brakar opened up this door at the bottom, so the distance when you respawn isn't quite as far. And hey, got, go. got bridge skip again. Well done. But... No ice rod, so I need to leave. Gosh. Right. Um, as long as you don't go to the dark world again, then that portal will still be active. So if you wanted to, you could check that big chest of Tower of Hera. Are there any other light world checks that you have outstanding? Um, I can do I could do the ether pin uh, ether tablet since I'm up there as well. That um, makes sense. I get off that, but yeah, that's not. not... It's not looking good. What's the best way to deal with this Helmosaur? I'm like very afraid that I'm gonna get hit and die here. Oh, the hard hat beetle? Yeah. Um, Can I arrow this? Hookshot? Hookshot? Oh, no, not the hard hat, the uh, the mini Helmosaur. Yeah. Oh, um, Hookshot will stun it. Silver arrows will kill it, which you don't have. Um, oh, see, no. I just do the Hookshot. The knockback from the sword. <laughs> the knockback from the sword pushed me back into the laser. That's, that's actually kind Oh, that's of unfortunate. Uh, yeah, it doesn't seem like that much, actually. Wow. That was, like, exactly what I was afraid was going to happen. Good boy. Um, I think you have enough magic for exactly one more cane shot, but you might want to grab the magic powder, or the full magic in the... Oh, in, uh... Yeah, I think, I think you're fine. Next piece, I think you're fine. Tower of Hera, we meet again. I always forget where that full magic is anyway. Okay. Oh. It wasn't enough? Nope. Okay. It was not. Um, in that case, there is a small magic pot. For one in here, right? No. Um, you have to go back to the room with the two pokey enemies. There is a small magic pot in the lower left one, and then you can mirror to... S start again from the entrance. The second entrance. Right. Whoa. Demise asks, do the furry avatars make the run go faster? Um, yes, absolutely. <laughs> yes, yeah. absolutely. Well, like, especially uh, considering... Wait, I have no magic. Oh, there we go. Uh, especially considering there's a lot of pixel perfect tricks, so I have I use visual cues based off my furry avatar in the game. <laughs> so yes, uh, they and actually do make the game. We're, wearing a, wearing an otter avatar guarantees that you get for, uh, fake flippers first try. <laughs> it's a psychological edge. That's a good way to put it. Yeah. Um, when I'm doing uh, when I'm doing runs where I can't use this avatar, uh, my go-to is generally uh, Abigail from Stardew Valley, who's one of the custom uh, avatars that's sort of included with the sort of stock uh, ROM hack. I've got one try at this. Which is no good if I do that. Uh-oh. No, I missed it. Yeah. It's fine. I didn't get hit, you so I got another try. Now you got another I try. I did exactly the same. As long as exactly I don't get the same hit. thing as I did the first time. 
Okay, watch out for this guy here. If you just run through, then he will hit you. Uh, I recommend using a cane block to deflect him. Cane block? Like, cane block to the left? Yeah. Or or just below me, so he bounces off of it? Uh, uh, below you, so he'll just... There you go. Nicely done. Okay. Oh, that's... That is absolutely extremely spooky on one heart. Okay. <laughs> Unfortunately, there are a bunch of fairies here, so I don't have to be on one heart anymore. Yeah. Nice thing about safety room is you can mirror to the light world and get grab some fairies. Um, don't actually fall down that hole and don't actually jump off that cliff, or you can be lost in the network of caves surrounding Death Mountain forever. Um, yep. I have done that once. It is not... I do not recommend it. Yeah. It is not pleasant. I also, man, I should have gotten. I should have, I should have just gone and bought potions before I tried to do Turtle Rock. I don't know why I didn't. I was in such a hurry to get to Death Mountain. Nice job on that bomb. This, this, this boss at the end of this dungeon is is tough. Okay. Uh, unless you have half magic. Oh, right. And I don't actually have that any magic. So let me think. Um. In my game, I have Bombos Tablet. I have the one item in Skull Woods. Did you do Magic Bat? I did do Magic Bat. It's much more likely it's in Source's game than mine. Yeah, if I can and I'm, I'm just gonna have to Death Spam to finish Laser Bridge. Yeah. It's a hard trick. If I can actually. I may want to go bottle those berries. I'm trying. To, I'm trying to think of how many times I've actually had to die to do this, because I, I can't get. I can't get. Uh, get uh, the laser bridge kit with any amount of consistency. Oh, hey, you got it. Got it once. And it's half magic. <laughs> oh man! Wow. That, is <laughs> that was magical. really clutch. Nicely done. Wow. Okay. So for the for the record, that is the first time I have ever done that glitch successfully. I have never done it before. <laughs> <laughs> the VR superpowers. <laughs> wow. Unfor okay. Unfortunately, there okay. wasn't an item there. Yeah. I guess. I guess I'll do Skull Woods, and that will make. If I do that, that means I'll have to do Turtle Rock again. Uh, I mean, if you want, you can wait until I um until I beat um Trinex. And see if there's Do you have an item on Trinix? I, I believe, I believe so. Let me double check. Hmm. Okay, uh, I'll just I set do up. Not. It's compass. It's compass. Okay. Um. There's also right. finishing thieves. That. Also finishing thieves town, which has three. You said. That's right. That's probably the play. Let's do that. Do you have like book or shovel or anything like that? I have book, um, which is why Bombos is in play. Um, let me do thieves first. That seems more sane. Worst case, hey, you know what? Worst case, I do. It, this is this is definitely the right call because if I beat thieves. And then <laughs> beat uh, Skull Woods. I'll have all three pendants. Oh man, you think it's a pedestal seed? I don't know. I'm just. I'm gonna hope hey, it's we're not. He we're hedging bets here. <laughs> hedging bets. Doing this first makes sense, hmm. even without that, because of the three checks. Um, Brecker, did you do Spike Cave? I did. Okay, S Source. I don't believe you did Spike Cave yet. I have not done Spike Cave, I've also not done Spiral, so I'll do Spiral on my way out of here, and then I'll go back up and do Spike after that. Okay. Did you do Ether Tablet? Uh, I have not done Ether Tablet either. Okay. Well, that's that's a couple yeah, that so are. That's good side checks. That's three. Yeah. yeah. So we've we're sort of we're sort of you know, and this is like at this point it gets a little technical and hard to follow along, but basically where we're at is we're in a state where we've all both of us have done all the major clusters of items. And so now there's just like a smattering of individual single chests that are off by themselves in a random place. 
Um, and since the item that we need has to be in one of them somewhere, it's just a matter of ticking them off one by one until we find it. Yeah. So this is one of the ways that like causes all that variability in in speedrun, right? Because if I had found an ice rod in Turtle Rock, like I would be, I would be basically good to go. Be, be cruising now. But um, sadly, I made that bet. That bet did pay off, and now I'm paying the consequences. Yeah, and so like I mean, part of getting good at, at randomizer is just learning how to sort of take good bets and 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 you know make reasonable decisions and whether those decisions actually pay off or not isn't you know yeah it's it's either a, it's either a good decision or it's not a good decision before you open the chest right yeah. i don't know why i came back here do this this way but that's okay and then what the all the glitches do is they basically allow us as runners to um, mitigate um uh, risk so for instance you know if there's an item that is in a dark room um that you need and you can do the dark room, you don't need the lantern. Um, and so that like helps mitigate if like the lantern's in a really bad place as an example. Okay, so we're about coming we're about coming there on time for Ferality and time to transition to the next event. So what we're going to do is I will continue streaming the end of this race on my Twitch channel, which is twitch.tv slash Voltalion. Um, hmm, as, we, as, we finish, as we finish up for Ferality, Brackar and Source, do you have any parting thoughts about randomizers in general and what this is like? Um, yeah, I would definitely advise to, to, to join the community if you're at all interested in this. Um, you, you know, the, the uh, Link to the Past uh, Randomizer website is great. The Discord is great. You can hit either of us up, I'm sure. Um, we'll happy to, happy to talk randomizer with you all. Yeah, I think the, um, hold on, I have to, I have to beat this boss real fast. Um, the only other thing I would add to that is, um, yeah, I think, Randomizers, randomizers for me are really interesting because it's kind of basically like a little puzzle box um, where you're always just trying to like solve it again and again um, with the addition of like, hey, actually like opening the puzzle box, super deadly. Be careful, it's got spikes. Um, so it's just <laughs> a really, oh, hey, there's my boots. There we go. <laughs> um, yeah, wow. Um, yeah, so uh, apologies for the technical issues. We started late, which is why uh, we're not able to finish. Um, but please, like, if you'd like to check out the rest of this, go to uh, the Twitch channel that Volt just said, which Volt one more time is. Uh, Twitch.tv slash Voltalion, which um, I will spell in the... Ch Actually, I don't know if I can post links, so I'll just type it in the chat. <laughs> Um, yeah, so we'll be, fin and, we'll be finishing yeah, up there. Thanks Go for ahead. hanging out with us. Yeah, thanks. If you're interested in speedruns, if you're interested in randomizing, definitely a fun experience. Really highly recommend. Um, thank you for checking this out. And we all hope that you enjoy the rest of the con. Before we, before we um, get going, I want to thank Rube and Zirla for helping out with the stream. Um, I don't know, Rube and Zero, if you can come onto the VR chat window that we have here, but um, yeah, feel free to say hi. Zirla is also the one who did the custom sprites that both Brakar and Source are playing with. And there's Zirla right next to Brakar saying hi. Um, and a fantastic job on that. Thank you both for helping out with the tracking. Thank you, Ferality, for having us. Flamey and Brulee for dealing with our uh, setup things that we had at the beginning of the stream. And yeah, I think that's I think that's it on our end. We'll finish the seed yeah. and have a great rest of your Ferality. Enjoy, everyone. Bye.